Welcome to the Ben Wood Johnson Podcast. You can visit Dr. Johnson's blog at benwoodpost.com. Dr. Johnson's works can be found at drbenwoodjohnson.com. You can also support Dr. Johnson on Patreon, the link to which is in the description. Hey, welcome to the Ben Wood Johnson podcast. Uh, thank you for being here again with us. Today is July the 30th, 2018. This is podcast number 11. Uh, it is part of our series about rights. And today we're going to be debating the concept of uh, universality and, and human rights. And what I mean by that is we're going to be talking about whether when we're talking about rights, we're talking about something that everybody has a clear understanding as to what it is. So when we say right, is it something that that is universal or is it something that that is universally understood? So that's what we're going to be discussing today. And the argument is simple. No, there's no such a thing. And as we as we can see, there are nuances in, in terms of what is right, what is a natural right, what is a social right, what is individual right or what is collective right okay so those nuances sometimes uh you know make it impossible for the individual to see or at least understand where he or she is in terms of his or her rights in the world so that's what we're going to be talking about because at the end of the day not having a clear understanding as to what one right is sometimes could make a very important difference so without further ado let us get to it when we are looking at rights from a human construct, okay, and let's say we're looking at the concept based on morality. We have to understand that the concept of morality, which we will discuss in other recordings, um, is somewhat um, relative, okay? It is relative to uh, the entity whose morality is in exerg. In, in other words, uh, my view of morality is not necessarily your view of morality uh, or his view of morality. And that makes the concept so fluid that uh, what is moral to one is not necessarily moral to somebody else. And that's where the problem is. We don't have the universality. Yes, there are certain conducts that are regulated to some extent uh, in, in almost every culture. For example, uh, killing. Uh, for example, um, a theft. All right. So those conducts are somewhat similar, but there are certain contexts where they apply, uh, and, and certain contexts where they don't apply. Uh, for for example. Uh, what is killing in one culture is the application of the law in another. For example, there are societies where it is okay to kill. It is, it is accepted to kill. To this day, there are societies where stoning a person to death is, is acceptable. There's nothing uh, immoral to that conduct, right? In this context, the person being stoned to death has absolutely no right, which the others or the ones who are stoning him or her are, are supposed to acknowledge. And I think this is where we have to understand those nuances as to what is your right as we, in relation to my rights and the scale of our understanding of what rights is. Okay. Um, when we look at rights from a narrow perspective, uh, it gives rise to, um, to a panoply uh, of, 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 of problems. Uh, but for the sake of brevity, uh, we will not delve in, in this aspect of the right in this particular recording. But we have to understand that this incongruity makes the concept elastic or fluid and hard to decipher. So when we look at the concept of rights from an individual perspective, in other words, we're talking about the rights of an individual as opposed to the rights of a collective or a group of people that also sometimes create nuances because what the rights of the many are 
uh, is not necessarily what the right of the one individual could be or should be. Okay, and sometimes there, there, there are, there's conflict in terms of what what it is that society owes you, as opposed to what you owe society. And sometimes you owe society your life. Uh, because it is expected that you would sacrifice everything for that for that collective uh, uh, existence. Okay, so at that at that point, your human worth sometimes could be undervalued because the collective worth is has, has more value than your worth. Okay, and this is where we have to understand those nuances. Okay, as to what is it in terms of my rights as an individual or our rights as a collective? Because sometimes if we don't have a clear delineation as to what those rights are, what the limitations or the limits of those rights are, then one could trample onto the other. Uh, one could 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 have an impact on the other in ways that are irreversible. Okay. Um, definition of a right from an individual perspective is a bit dangerous. Okay. That individual perspective does not necessarily encompass certain moral virtues. However. It encompasses certain inherent individual rights to exist, and that is in relationship to others. Okay, uh, that understanding sometimes is erroneous because it implies a certain exclusivity. Okay, it, that is an exclusivity that is within the inherency of the person, or the individual, or the entity. Or that that person who, who's, who that rights is owed, or that person who's entitled to that rights, right? Uh, those those two paradigms have sort of explained actions of both individuals and communities throughout the history of humanity. Okay, understandings about morality have evolved over time. Um, such understandings have also been accepted, at least to some extent. Um, that is, ideals that were contested 100 years ago, 200 years ago, are now becoming accepted. Um, the, they are becoming the fundamentals upon which society or individuals are expected to function within the realm of society or within the realm of the universe as a whole. So it has to be understood that uh, uh, when we're talking about rights, um, we're not necessarily talking about uh, the human construct itself, okay? Because the definition of of the rights, um, whether we're looking at it from the individual's individual perspective, or whether we're looking at it from the perspective of the community, uh, it, it is not necessarily inherent to the uh, to a specific group. Right is not necessarily inherent to a particular group or subgroups within the human species. So in order to understand right or the concept of rights, we have to understand what is the origin of rights. We have to look at the foundation, the fundamentals of, of, of the concept. Is right something one has or something inherent in the individual? Is it something somebody receives over time? Or is it something the individual is born with, right? In other words, do you have rights or are you born with rights? Uh, and, and this is a fundamental difference we have to understand. Uh, whether I have rights or whether I have rights within me. In other words, I am not entitled to the rights, but I the right is inherent in me. So wondering whether I have rights implies the possibility that I might not have rights. And to understand rights from this paradigm undermines the meaning of the term itself, okay? Because the term rights does not necessarily imply something one receives or one has gotten over time. And I would argue that right is part of being, okay? Every living being has a fundamental right to be. Um, so it is important to understand that and make that clear delineation, right? Uh, presently, rights as defined within the context of something one has or receives implies the possibility that someone does not have it, thereby not having rights puts you in a position where you are entitled to rights and society or the collective uh, has an obligation to afford you such rights. 
at the same time that collective has also the capacity to withhold such rights from you to take it whenever they want and as we can see in, in various social settings um, it is possible for the collective to take your rights away and let's say you you committed a crime you did something wrong and for some reason you have been stripped of your uh, social rights okay and oftentimes there's not a clear delineation between your social rights and your natural rights if you're sent in prison you are automatically uh, stripped of your natural right to be free to be to roam through the world to 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 be to breathe a certain way to be a certain way so there's a clear delineation here between your inherent rights and your social rights which we will talk about in, in, in other recordings okay so not having rights gives you the possibility so you're entitled uh, to certain rights so one finds oneself in a situation where one can be given rights, right? And the fact that one is given rights is not necessarily rights per se, because no man can give rights to another man, okay? And if a right comes from a man or entity made out of men, this is not right, it is rather a privilege, although they call it right, but it is privilege, it is a privilege. And I think this is a nuance we have to understand. Rights are natural, rights are inherent in the being, it cannot be given, it cannot be taken away, it cannot be stripped away, it is inherent, every human being has such rights, okay, it is a natural right to be, it is a natural right to breathe, it is a natural right to be secured in their person, it is a natural right to speak their mind, it is a natural right to eat, to survive, right? So those rights are not, and as it is often said, those rights are inalienable. In other words, those rights are not given and cannot be taken. Nonetheless, this is not what we see in, in most social settings. The person does not have any rights which the collective can acknowledge beyond what the collective wants to acknowledge. In other words, if society does not acknowledge your human right to be, then that right will be taken away from you. Okay, And we have to understand it because rights in this case is defined as something you are entitled. Thereby, the collective gets to decide when you are no longer entitled to such rights. And this is where the danger is. We have to understand the fundamentals of the concept, the foundation of the notion itself, to understand where the, the error, if you will, where the misunderstanding of what a human rights is and what human rights could never be. Okay? Because the understanding of, of not having rights means somebody could be given a right, right? And as I said, this is a privilege in and of itself. If you can be given a right, or that right could be taken away from you, then it is not right, it is a privilege, okay? So we need to understand the difference between rights and privilege, right? In terms of society and nature. We have to understand rights within the context of what one is given and what one is born with, okay? So we have to examine what rights should be and, and how it is understood and how it is treated and how human beings are treated, how human beings treat one another in the world. So when we're talking about rights, we have to understand the, the, the difference between what is natural, which is a natural right, and what is given by society. So when we hear the term rights, uh, human rights, so we have to ask ourselves, are they talking about the natural rights to be, or are they talking about the social rights to be? Because there's a clear difference between social rights and natural rights. It is important to understand these concepts because at the end of the day, that is what's going to define whether you are as per your nature or whether you are as per others. In other words, whether you are you as an individual or whether you are as per the discretion of the collective.